Hello, my friends. Blessing and peace on you in the mighty name of King Jesus. Troy Brewer here, senior pastor here at Open Door Church. And guys, tonight, you know what we're going to do for this Wednesday night experience? We're going to get into part three of my teaching series that I call Prophetic for Dummies. One of the things I'm trying to challenge everybody in, in, the, in, in all of our paradigm of thinking is simply that you don't have to be a Marvel Comics superhero to hear God speak. The Bible says that in the last days that the Spirit of the Lord would be poured out upon all flesh and His sons and His daughters would prophesy. Sons and daughters literally means little boys and little girls. And it's part of that childlike wonder that I want to encourage you in. Guys, we filmed this with all of my staff here at Open Door Church. And tonight, guys, you're going to get to see the third segment of it. So get ready. Be teachable. Get ready to worship with us. Get ready. And oh, please just go ahead and push the like button. Go ahead and share this. Go ahead and comment on it. And let us know where it is that you're watching from. This is the Open Door Wednesday Night Experience. Boom. Blessed a peace on you in the mighty name of King Jesus. Welcome, guys, to a Wednesday night encounter service. This is our open door experience that we have on Wednesday night. We are joined here today with some of the amazing open door worship, and I bless these guys, call you guys blessed. Our production team is in the house, and we are ready to worship the King. So, Pastor AJ, you ready to do this, man? Yes, sir. All right, man, let's get her done. Walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice or the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. And we've all searched for the light of the day and the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight And we've all run to things we know that just ain't right And there's a better life, there's a better life If you got pain, he's a pain taker If you feel lost Say this together. If you believe it, Come on, man. if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. Come on, PT. Oh, if you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. Oh. Now what do we 
we're doing? We're going to call upon the Lord, man. Call upon the Lord? Right yes, on. sir. So where's this song come from? Who's doing this? Well, doing it's going to be a little tag team right here. So how do you, where, who, where, does, where does this song come from? This is was written by Pastor Furtick oh, at okay. Elevation Church. Yes, oh, cool beans. Man. Yeah, man. Awesome. Him and uh, Chris Brown, the worship pastor. From and what and what key are we in? Uh, this is Polly. D. D is in dog. All right, I got it. Nice. Now let's do it. Oh! 
Okay, so what's the next thing we're doing? What are we doing? Anybody have any idea? You came to our rescue? Gosh, I can't remember the first time the first time I heard this song. It was a long time ago, man. I'm talking about a long time ago. Uh, I, I, I can remember. It was just became one of those songs that we did for a long, long time. It was kind of like there are certain songs that they just become anthems for a certain period of time, and that this is definitely one of those songs. What, what key are we doing with that? Okay, right on. Okay, who's leading us? KP, right on? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, let's do it, man.
This is declaration. Lord, we, we don't just sing it, we believe it. This is our prayer, our meditation tonight. And I just, I just speak this over every person watching as well, that we just come into agreement with, with what you're doing in my life our world and our love that you would be lifted high yes in our lives in our world and our love in our love that you would be lifted high tonight y'all ready
Jesus says the whole purpose of him coming back is so that where he is, we can also be. Now, that's not asking too much, is it? He's like, you know what my whole motivation is? You know, people get freaked out when they think about the return of King Jesus if you don't have a right perspective. A per perspective. And like, you're just like, okay, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, you do. You're going to be where Jesus is. And that's his whole agenda. Well, I just kind of feel like God's going to show up and wreck my life. He's going to show up and give you life. That's what he's going to do. Love the Lord. Good job, man. Everybody agree? Good job. Hallelujah. Right on. Yeah. Let's do this.
praise you. We thank you, God, that your mighty presence is here, God, and that you love us. Father God, sir, we just want to renew our availability to you. God, we just want to give you our whole hearts. We love you, Lord God, and we praise you, and we thank you, God, you're just so good. Keep on praising the Lord, man, right there where you're at, because he's here. Just say, here I am, Lord. Just say, here I am. So good is our King. Guys, we're just going to worship the Lord here for a couple minutes or so. Keep this a holy atmosphere in your house. We'll be right back with you.
Well, hello there, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning into this Wednesday night experience at Open Door Church right here in Big Time Burleson, Texas. You know what? We worship was amazing, but we are just now getting started. And I don't know if you were watching on Sunday or if you got to hit the Sunday message, but on Sunday, Pastor Troy talked about how during all of these pandemics and rioting and everything that's going on in the world, we are able to do more than we've ever done before. That means that we've rescued more people. We've fed more people. People. We have helped more people, whether it be needing an AC unit, whether it be needing their bills paid. You know, we are helping people because we are the body of Christ and we are not going to allow what is happening in the world to affect the body. That is why we're here. We are here to make the impact and the difference that we are called to make. And you know what? We're not slowing down and we're not stopping. But the way that we cannot slow down or not stop is when you do not slow down or stop as well. We need you to be able to do the things that we are doing. So it is offering time and I'm asking you, please don't slow down and don't stop because we don't want to slow down and we don't want to stop. So if you have an offering to give, you can text the word open door EXP to 77977. So again, the word is open door EXP and the number is 77977. Or if you'd like, you can go online to www.opendoorexperience.com forward slash giving and you can give your tithes and offerings there. You can set up automatic payments as well. So if you're deciding I'm not slowing down no matter what my circumstances are, go ahead and set up those automatic givings. Be a partner of faith and see how the Lord blesses you. Another way that you can give is by calling our hotline anytime, day or night. It's 877 877- 413-0888 or if you'd like to send in a check or a money order because you want to keep your budget and you keep those carbon copies of your checks, go ahead right there on the screen you should see the P.O. box that we have designated for our giving and you can just send the, it to that P.O. box. You can address it, Open Door Church or Troy Burr Ministries, whichever one you would like and we will get your gift and your offering and we will be able to do so much for the kingdom. When we come together, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I only have $10, but if 100 people has $10, that's a difference that we can make. And that's what we're asking you to do. We're asking you to partner with us, whatever you have, so that we can gather it together and we can send it off to all the world. So thank you guys for your partnership. We're about to go into a music video to be able to just give you the time to partner however which way you want to partner. And we, and then after that, it's service time. Pastor Troy is bringing in his message, and we know that you are going to love Prophetic for Dummies. It's amazing. I really, really enjoyed this first one, and you will too. All right, guys, see you later. <laughs> Bye. This world can play tricks on your mind till you can't leave your past behind. You keep on making the same mistakes then you cling on to the wrong things to hide your pain come on and meet me down by the riverside we're gonna jump all in and leave our past behind we're gonna come up new with a refreshed mind come on and meet me down by the riverside This world, it sure can drag you down and make you feel like there's no one around who's willing to lend you a hand. And before you know it, it's starting over again. Come on and meet me down by the riverside. We're gonna jump all in and leave our path. Well, hello, my friends. It's Wednesday night, and you made it to another Wednesday night 
open door church experience right here. And guys, I am with my friends. This is a staff at Open Door Church. You guys are getting in on a Tuesday morning staff meeting and you're sitting on Wednesday night. Let's all go yay. Give, yay. give me the Tom Slick, yay. Tom Slick, yay. Awesome. So we're talking about prophecy and we're talking about pl prophecy plainly stated or as it's marketed today, prophecy for dummies. And uh, I want to just tell you that my, my prophetic walk from the very beginning has been a strong prophetic walk because I immediately was in a prophetic culture as soon as I got into it. But I asked you guys in the first session, how many of you guys, you didn't get into the prophetic later on, and most of you raised your hands. But then what we find out is you've always been a prophetic person. You just didn't know to call it that, right? right? So uh, all of us that come from Baptist backgrounds, there's not a Baptist worth his salt that doesn't believe that he hears God speak or in the sense of, I know that God showed me that or whatever. But we also know that we, but you're not allowed to call it that for whatever reason, <laughs> right? You just get in trouble or something coming, depending upon what denomination that you come from. You can't call it prophetic or whatever. But, but for us, we're using the terminology of prophetic for the way that we interact with the Holy Spirit in our relationship with God, prophetically. Going on? So you guys, you guys with me on all that? I know a guy who is right here among us, who I will not point out, that heard God speak, and he was in New York City. And I mean, I didn't know God could speak to anybody in New York City, right? And he was in New York City, and he heard God speak, and God told him to go to the Amazon. Heard God speak. He had no desire to go to the Amazon, wanted nothing to do with going to the Amazon. And when he, when he went to his friends and went to his church community to say, dude, number one, I heard God speak. And number two, he told me to go to the Amazon. Uh, I don't think they applauded him. I don't think that they patted him on the back and go, dude, that's awesome. They said, number one, you can't hear God speak. Number two, you're not supposed to go to the Amazon. It ain't safe. Yeah, that's the majority of Christianity right there. Uh, how, how, why would God ever tell you to do something dangerous? Because we all know God's a pansy like the rest of all of us are. <laughs> right? It's blasphemous. It's just totally blasphemous, man. Right on. There's another pan right there. Pansy. Wow. So, yeah. So, I mean, you can't. It's, it's just blasphemous. And so, and so. A lot of, there is a faction among the body of Christ that says you cannot, abs you absolutely cannot hear God speak. But I think that the majority of Christianity, uh, nearly, I would say the majority of Christians that have a loving relationship with God, you know, you, you know, man, the Lord told me that somehow, some way. And you might be afraid to voice that because it's not, ex it's not an accepted part of your culture, but you know you know, Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed that unto you, but my Father who is in heaven, and upon this rock I will build my church. Peter is not the rock that the church is built on. We're not Catholic. It's being able to hear the Father speak. That faith that you, it's, what happens is, it started, the prototype of all things prophetic is Abraham. And God spoke to him. And he loved his voice. Didn't have a clue who he was. Didn't have a clue where he was going. He just said, I fell in love with this God the second he spoke to me. And the brother had to go to his family and say, I gotta go. I gotta follow this God. They're like, what God? I don't know. He hadn't told me yet. Where am I going? I don't know. Didn't tell me. Just told me to get up and get out and to leave everything secure and to go to the Amazon. Oh, God would never do that. Just Anyway, I'm about to just start ranting on that. No, you would never do that. And you think you're God. And you're not. And you pride yourself. Yeah, mic drop. Mm. You pride yourself on knowing the Bible when you are so biblically and kingdom illiterate. Just unbelievably, I mean, irresponsibly illiterate of the God of the Bible. 
You know the God of your culture, but you don't know the God of the Bible. Right on? I mean, come on, here's what's real. All of us have been guilty of this at some part or another. And, and where the Lord has had to rock your world and go, hello, and you go, I had no idea. Yeah. And look, that's happened to me many, many, many times. I'm a human being and I have fallen into this where I've had God show up and I just went, I, I had no idea. I am so sorry. I am so sorry, God. I had no idea. I was in a whole nother groove that I thought was you and it wasn't you. Christianity for dummies is this. What, how, how do I become a Christian? God speaks to you. You hear his voice. You love his voice. And you submit your life to him. That's Christianity 101. Basic for dummies. Yes, ma'am. You know, Paul says, I wish that you would all prophesy. That's right. And what he's saying in that is that as Christians... The, the first prophecy is for God to speak to us and reveal who Jesus is. And so when he's saying that, I wish you would all prophesy, he's saying prophesying isn't telling someone their future. And I think that's where it gets so mixed up in our culture mm -hmm. is you think if I'm prophesying, I have to be able to tell somebody their future or tell them what they're thinking. You know, you're supposed to be able to read their minds or whatever, and that's what it's gotten to. But that's not it. Prophesying is hearing God speak and saying what it is that God's spoken. And so what Paul is saying when he says, I wish that you would all prophesy, is saying, what has God spoken to you? God is telling you that Jesus is the Son of God. I wish that all of you would go and tell people Jesus is the Son of God is what he's saying. I wish you would all go tell people that. And that's the prophecy that he's talking about. But we have it in our culture that prophesying is you know, just being like a fortune teller, and that's not what it is. Some okay. people have the gift to be able to, to do that, but that's not what Paul is talking about. He's talking about, hey, go and tell people what you have heard God speak to you and not, you know, try to go tell people their futures and things like that. Okay, so that's good. So, so obviously there is a part of being prophetic about knowing what's coming. All right, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, those kinds of prophetic words, right? But anything that falls into the category of hearing God speak to you and you speaking what yes. God is saying is prophetic. Yes. Anything that falls into that category. Mm -hmm. If God tells you to call somebody and you call them, and if, if you're just sitting there and you think about something. Yesterday, I thought of my friend in Cambodia and I thought about him yesterday. I go, I need to call him. And I called him and he's like, man, my dad just died. And I was like, man, the Lord just told me to call you, right? And I mean, he's on the other side of the world. He's in swinging Cambodia. And he's like, yeah, Troy, my dad just died. He just died. Would you, would you please pray for me? Okay, well, that's prophetic, okay? So, but that's the urging of the Holy Spirit. And it's, it has to do with our relationship with the Holy Spirit, okay? And this, is, and this is very developmental. And all those things just fall in the category. So it's just, it's regular. The prophetic is regular Christianity, it's just being a Christian. It's just being in love with God. And yeah, there are some of us that do develop gifts of like words of wisdom or you develop, you know, your dreams. You begin to, you begin to see God speak through everything around you. You, you begin to have, uh, an, you know, angelic experiences and you begin to those kinds of crazy cool things. But anything that falls under the category of your relationship, a, a real relationship with God, yeah. falls into the category of the prophetic, that whole prophetic value. So our value for his voice, our value for his presence, all of that means that we have to be consecrated to live in this prophetic life. Right on. All right, well, let's talk about this whole consecration thing. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 29, he said, For Moses has said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, that he might bestow upon you a blessing. There's a commitment that you have to make if you're going to grow in the prophetic. You have to be committed to it. And it's, it's not about a trick you learn. It's about a life you live. Right? It's not about, um, you know, I, I love going to conferences and seminars. And I love, because let me tell you what I'm looking for. I'm not just looking for revelation, which I am. But I'm looking for language for the revelation I already have. Right. It's a big part of being able to grab a hold of wisdom is you gotta have the language for it. A lot of times you know things in your spirit, but you don't know how to apply it and you don't know how to, 
You don't know how to give it to anybody else simply because you do not have the language for it yet. And then once you got the language for it, man, you got it. The revelation and language go hand in hand. It's an it's a, it's a interesting way that, that God has made human beings is that as soon as you get the language, you get, a, you get a revelation and it becomes a part of your life. You guys agree with that, right? And that's why you go to conferences. That's why you, you study things. That's why you're, man, when I'm, looking for, when I'm looking at stuff, I'll tell you right now, everything I'm looking for is language. And because I've got billions of thoughts that I don't have language for yet. And so I'm always, always, I'm just like, man, dude, did you hear what that guy just said? He said, and I'm thinking about how he phrased it in a way that made sense. I want to, I want to divert here just a little bit. And, and by the way, that's, that is a prophetic development gift is learning the language for everything. Okay. And, and by the way, are you guys ready for this? That's one of the ways you learn to speak in other tongues is God gives you a heavenly language. He gives you the actual words to actually say something that doesn't come from you. Why right are you guys tracking with me? Okay, so, so let, me just, let, me, let me just tell you this. I don't, I don't know if you guys, everybody in here knows who Helen Keller is, right? Okay, um, Helen Keller, who was known as an absolute savage, a savage beast, until she learned the gift of language, and then she became an eloquent, godly woman. And I don't know if you've ever read any of the things that she wrote and spoke after uh, Annie Sullivan had her amazing in- encounter with her. But if you, I, I would just encourage you guys to look up Helen Keller and look up her own biography about the first, the first word she ever learned was the word water. Okay, and that's so prophetic, by the way, right? It's so freaking prophetic, right? The voice of many waters, right? The very first word. But here's the deal. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, you know, the, if you've ever seen an, a play on it or if you've ever seen a movie on it or whatever, but Annie Sullivan is this missionary teacher and she goes and finds him. She goes and finds her. Helen Keller is, she's completely, she's completely blind and she's completely and she's completely deaf. So her only understanding comes from external and internal feeling. That's it. Okay, and I want to tell you, that screws with your head in a really bad way. If how you receive and perceive the world is just through, you, you, just through how you feel, you become a monster. And she was a savage beast monster. And they didn't know what to do with her, so they just kind of let her act however she wanted to act. And she was bound and determined, I'm going to teach her sign language and I'm going to make, well, how, how, how can you teach a deaf person sign language? They can't see it. I'm going to touch her because she can feel and I'm going to make the signs in her hands. Her hands are the most sensitive part of her body. So I'm going to constantly do this. W-A-T-E-R, right? I'm going to do that. And then you're going to get it. You're, you're going to get it. So one day she was out. And this is what she says. This is so amazing. And guys, it it makes me want to cry when I think about it. She says the second she understood, the moment she understood the word water was water, she knew there was a God and she knew that God loved her. Before anybody ever shared Jesus with her, she fell in love with God the second she understood the word water. And that's her testimony. I mean, she became a Christian. She gave her heart to Jesus. And all she knew was one word, water. Like, what the heck is that? She had language to be able to personally communicate. And her, this door that was busted open for her to be able to personally communicate penetrated her heart. And it was supernatural. It was a supernatural breakthrough that happened with the word water at a fountain of water. If you receive of the water that I give unto you, you shall become a well springing up. Amen. Jesus met, she's the woman at the well, Helen Keller. She can't see, she can't hear. All she knows to act like is an animal. And until one day, somebody personally touched her and gave her a word, and it changed everything. It's crazy. Just 
so beautiful that she, for the first time in her life, she knew what love was. And that's, that's another thing, that that's, that's a direct quote. She never understood the concept of love and she never understood the concept of God until she understood one word, water. There was no way for her to perceive any of that until she had a language. It's crazy, isn't it? So a big part of the prophetic and a big part of the prophetic gifts that God has given us and a big way that God causes heaven to invade our earth is by giving us language for things. So on the day of Pentecost, and guys, y'all know we have a very real Pentecost coming up. We just got through having a very literal Passover where everybody was literally quarantined, right? I'm telling you, we're about to have a literal Pentecost where the Spirit of the Lord moves upon us and He gives us a language. A language, right? To speak in, not, not just to the nations, but to speak into every tribe around us of business people, of families, of kids, of whatever, whatever that is. We're about to literally have that happen to us. Okay, well, we were talking about this scripture on consecration. We were talking about that. So Moses said, consecrate yourself today. And again, it's Exodus 32, verse 29. And he says that he might bestow upon you a blessing this day. So there's a special blessing that only comes from times of what the Bible calls consecration. And consecration is about an intentional posture, an intentional posture towards God's presence. And if you're going to ask me why are some people uh, way more prophetic than other people, it's not because they have the special Jedi juice and they were born with it. It's because they simply are intentionally postured towards it. That's it. Jesus says with the same measure that you meet, it'll also be measured back to you. It's like if you here, Jesus has this awesome rule and I love it. You get as much Jesus as you want. Right. However much Jesus you have in your life right now is exactly how much you want. But man, you got a hunger and you got a thirst after righteousness. And he says, he says this, I'm going to preach this on Sunday when I'm going off on the power of the Holy Spirit and Pentecost. That whenever it says, uh, and I saw the Lord in the year that King Uzziah died, and I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. That word filled means filled and 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 filled. It means a continual, everlasting filling. So it's like, well, what are you guys saying, man? You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't you already have the Holy Spirit? Yes. But concerning his kingdom and of his peace, there shall, ne- there, there shall be no end. Well, why, has it, why have you hit a ceiling? Because that's all I can handle. And if I don't admit that, I won't continue to go after more and more and more. And like, why, why can't I handle more? Because I don't have much of a pain tolerance and I don't really I don't want to change anymore. I don't want to get called on the carpet on something else. Uh, I'm very comfortable with how I have Jesus in my life right now. God help us. Blessed, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled and 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 filled. So you have to consecrate yourself to get a second touch from God, a third touch from God, to go after the Holy Spirit in a whole new way. You have to consecrate yourself. And there's a blessing that, that can only be stowed upon you unless, you unless you consecrate yourself to the Lord and go, okay, today I'm not doing what I typically do. I'm putting on a praise tape and I'm crying after God today. And I, I'm going to find the Lord. Jesus, I've got to have you. Lord, I have to have you. I need to hear you speak. You got to do that. And if you don't do that, you'll know everything there is to know about the Mueller investigation and Game of Thrones. <laughs> but you won't know jack about how God is trying to save you from a horrible car crash. You won't know nothing about how you better quit talking to that person. You're going to get into bad trouble. You won't know anything about, I have a million dollar blessing for you and it's going to require this move and that move and that move. But you'll know everything about the Mueller investigation. And you don't even work for the government. And there ain't nothing you can do about voting on any of that. There's nothing you can do about it except for learn it and learn it and learn it and get matter and matter and matter. Or you can consecrate yourself to a prophetic life and you can be filled and filled and filled and filled and filled and filled and filled. filled. Psalms 34, verse 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. So I'm always like, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay, so O taste, the pay, the mouth, 5780, and see, 2020, that the Lord is good. It's that time. Okay, there is a big part of the prophetic life 
and the learning and growing in God that only comes from encounters. It, only, it does not come from theorizing what, who God is going to be or what he's going to do. You have to taste to see this. Okay, you have to taste it. And so, so tasting is personal experience, it's personal encounter. The whole reason why our motto is experience real life is we want people to personally encounter God. We don't want to just, we don't want people just to read about it. Experience, we want people to personally encounter God. Real, we want it to be real and genuine, right? And life, we want it to be life-giving. That's everything we do. I want it to fall within those three categories. So taste and see that the Lord is good. When it comes to consecrating yourself to hearing God speak, and when you do, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to bite into His goodness, and you're like, whoa, I have tasted and I have personally seen. And what, and what you have to do is you have to build up a history of you and God. And you have to live according to your walk with God and not according to your walk outside of God. And that is a consecrated lifestyle. Where instead of living according to the people who don't love you or the bad things that have happened or some terrible thing that happened multiple times or... I failed and failed, or I invested, or I believed, or whatever. Okay, that's your history. Those are the things that you have tasted outside of God. But you have to live according to what you have tasted in God. And you have to be consecrated to that. You have to be bound and determined. I'm going, I'm going to remember these things. That is where our hope comes from. And you live according to that. But... But here's the problem, and this is, this is, another, pro, this is another reason why there's, there's typically a problem prophetically within the church. It's because I, it's hard for me to explain to you my encounter with God. Okay? So my personal encounters with God are not for you. They're, they're for me. And there's a, there's a big part of loneliness that comes with living a supernatural lifestyle or a big part of loneliness where you have all this stuff and you want to share it with everybody else and you just can't. It's just like going on a missions trip. I want to tell you, everybody goes through a hangover when they get back from a missions trip. It's because they, they got all these plans of how they're going to share everything with everybody and there's nobody here to share it with. I know what I'm talking about. And like, why is that? Because, are, are you ready for this? Because it was exclusive to you. Our firmament. It was exclusive to you. It was in your field of view. It doesn't belong to anybody else. You're the only person in the world that saw that cloud and it looked like Jesus. The guy three miles away saw the same exact cloud, but it didn't look like Jesus to him. Right? So there's things that you encounter, but that is a principle of intimacy. As much as Leanna wants to tell you, how much she loves me and how awesome that is, she doesn't. Because it doesn't belong to everybody else. It belongs to us. And that's how intimacy works. And when it comes to your intimacy with God, and when it comes to your encounters with God and incredible things that's going on between you and God, you want to share those things, but they're not for everybody else, man. No, you taste and you see that the Lord is good. And you... Build your love life with God, remembering those personal encounters with Him. You guys agree with that? Yes. What's the time? Can anybody think of a time that God showed up and everything changed because He showed up and it meant something to you and it didn't mean anything to anybody else? Um, my husband had just had a massive brain hemorrhage and been in the hospital for like five months. And we had then after... Re, uh, rehab in the hospital to take him to another rehab in St. Louis and so on my way following the ambulance I said Lord you're going to have to show me where I can stay in St. Louis because I don't know anybody and the next morning I woke up after I checked him in and I was in a hotel and I said okay Lord the first agenda is for me to find a place where I can live and he said don't worry about it I've already got a family picked out for you, and mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about contacting them. They'll contact you today, and they did. And wow. I, I lived with them for the next two months. And it was actually a pastor and his family that my husband had given advice to 
uh, when we were in California, they, wow. they were in California, and he wanted to know which church he should go to that was looking at him at awesome. that time. He said, go to St. Louis. Awesome. Praise God, man. I had a word one time. I went to Steve Fish's church, and it was in the midst of a horrible church split, and in the midst of talking about here, not there, not their church. And I, I was going through the worst thing I'd ever been through in my whole life. And uh, I, I went there, and they have a prophetic school, and this little girl came up. It was on a Sunday night, and they used to do these weird prophetic things, you know. And I just wanted to go sit in the presence of God and just see if, if may, maybe God had a word for me because I was losing my mind. And I'm like, okay. And I'm just sitting there minding my own business. And this little girl walks up to me. She was probably 20 or 21, but she looked like she was 12. You know, one of those people, you know, that they'll be 80 years old and still look like they're 40, you know. I don't typically like those people. Anyway, she comes over and she says, um, uh, I have a word. And uh, they, they teach us not to apologize and just to give it. But I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have a strange word. And, and it's only three words, and I don't know what it means, and I was, I was a rude dude in a crude mood. I, I was not, I had a migraine, I was going through some, this in 2011, I was going through something really bad, and I just said, well, honey, either spit it out or go away because I'm seeking the Lord. What do you, what do you have? What, what do you got? And, and, isn't that nice? Isn't that sweet? And she said, yeah, that really, that really helped her. I'm like, spit it out or get away from me. I'm here to seek God. I don't want to listen to you babble. What do you want? And she just says, she says this, um, God told me uh, to tell you that uh, um, you're a screamer. <laughs> and I want to tell you, man, I, that wouldn't mean anything to anybody else. That meant something to me because when I was a little boy, I learned the famous Davy Crockett speech. I'm a screamer. I can dive deeper and come out drier than anybody else. I'm a screamer. I can guy, 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 guy. And that's a speech from Davy Crockett. And Davy Crockett's my hero. <laughs> and a little girl, and she's like, I don't know what this means. It's just weird, okay? And I'm sorry, but I tried not to give you this word. I have to give you this word. God told me to tell you that you're a screamer. That's the greatest prophetic word I've ever got in my whole life. And it, it, sounds so, it would sound so stupid to anybody else, you know? You're a screamer. Okay, thank you. What a profound word. Oh, it was a profound word to me. So, friends, I want to encourage you. And I want to just tell you this, that the Lord is speaking to you. You guys believe that? Y'all believe that God is speaking? But, man, we have to be consecrated. We got to be open to it. We got to go after it. We can't just be mere curiosity seekers. We got to be true seekers and we have to go after it. So I just want to, guys, can we just pray for all of us that we would hear God speak in a much greater way? All right. So King Jesus, I love you, Lord, and I praise you and I thank you, God. Father God, sir, we want to hear you speak. Father, speak to us in a greater way, Lord. Thank you, God, for that little girl that gave me that word at Steve Fish's church that just said, you're a screamer. God, I will never forget that. I will never forget that. How, God, you, you spoke to me and you spoke... You spoke to the little boy inside of me and told me that. And God, that was such a, such a game-changing moment for me. I pray, God, that that would fall, that kind of a spirit would fall upon all of us, Lord. And God, we love you and we praise you and we thank you, King Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Right on. Well, guys, I want to say thank you so much, man, for joining us tonight. Please don't forget to like this. Don't, for, don't forget to share it. Don't forget to comment, right? Say something nice, right? Because we'll delete you if you don't. And we'll, we will privately make fun of you as well. But that wouldn't be very nice, would it? Okay. We probably won't make fun of you. Anyway, guys, man, I love you guys. I call you all the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody. Yay. So... When it comes to the prophetic gifts and when it comes to our God-given ability to be able to hear God speak and how we go through this, we have to go through these different categories of just because God is speaking doesn't mean that you know it. Just because you know it doesn't mean that you understand it. Just because you understand it doesn't mean you know what to do with it. Just because you know what to do with it doesn't mean you know what the outcome is going to be. And just because you know what the outcome is going to be doesn't mean it's necessarily going to play out like that because it all bears fruit, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. And in the midst of all this complicated stuff, it's just super important for you and I to keep it so simple that we stay dedicated, we stay committed, we stay pure within our own hearts, that our goals and our intentions, 
are really in alignment, or I should say in alignment with the kingdom. You know, I, I know that that's you. And I just want to just encourage you, keep on going after this. And by the way, listen, we're not yet done. Next Wednesday, we're going to continue this as we wrap all this up. Listen, you are a prophetic person, and you are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favor of the Lord. Blessings and peace on you all. Bye-bye, everybody.